I want to look at the electrolysis of water today, and I want to do that on a small scale. I've got a YouTube. You can have the student make these. You can make them yourself. If you're in a hurry some years and you have more time other years, you can very easily make them yourself and count on being able to use them for a long time. That's what I do. But I have put my solution in there, my water, and I said solution. If we look at the board over here, I've got water written as a pure substance. Why did I say solution? I want water to decompose. I want an electric current to be the cause of that decomposition, but I want it to happen in timely fashion. So what I've got is a solution. It has mostly water, some sodium sulfate. The sodium sulfate is a strong electrolyte, improves the conductivity, in this case measurably, of the water. You see kind of a greenish cast to the solution because I have bromthymol blue in it. Bromthymol blue is blue in base, yellow in acid, so I have approximately a neutral solution. So what I'm going to do is use a pipette to put the solution down in there. When you're filling these, this is a tip I give my students, if you notice, I started with the uh, with the pipette down low, and I squeezed fairly slowly. That's a way to keep from getting air bubbles in there. For my electrodes, being sort of ever the frugal one, I do after all teach at a private school. I didn't want to waste a whole electrode, a whole uh, pencil lead for each side. So I took one and I broke it in half. One pencil lead per student, plenty. Put one on one side. How far down does it have to be? It has to be in the solution. One on the other side. And we can watch as it goes. You can see bubbles forming, more on one side than the other. And the color's not real dark, but as time goes on, notice that this side gets more blue and this side gets more yellow. That's the key to what's really going on here. And one of the things I tell my students, you can see this takes no time at all, say, see if you can reverse whatever happens at first. If I take this out and put it here, take this out and put it there, one of the nice things about this This is such a small tube that the liquid stays in. Uh, one of the nice things about this is it goes fast enough you can actually reverse the process and have the yellow side start to turn back to blue, the blue side turn back to yellow. Okay, um, good. So let's now go see if we can figure out what's going on. This side turned blue. Acid or base? Base, okay. And that is the negative electrode. Emphasize that a little bit, put it back on, or not. The positive side turned yellow. That's acid. So.
the negative electrode produced hydroxide. Produced it from water. Negative electrode is adding electrons. So I know I've got something like this going on. Let's go back and make a couple of more observations. Let's look at those bubbles that are coming off. That side's giving me a lot of really little bubbles, and they're coming very fast. Fewer bubbles, not as fast. H2O has hydrogen and oxygen. If the oxygen's in the hydroxide, then the gas must be hydrogen. But H isn't how we represent hydrogen, it's H2. <clears throat> so, if you go through and work your way through it, there's the equation you come up with. I'm adding electrons, four water molecules are becoming four hydroxide molecules and two hydrogen molecules, two uh, four hydroxide ions. On the other side, I'm producing hydrogen ions. If I'm taking the hydrogen out of water, all that's left is oxygen. Well, that must mean I need two here. So I need four here. Four electrons must be released at the positive electrode. Well, this is the equation I wrote. Is that the equation this would give me? Four electrons are going to cancel. Four waters and two waters, six waters. Four hydroxide ions, four hydrogen ions. two hydrogen molecules, and an oxygen molecule. The fastest reaction we can measure is the combination of hydrogen ion and hydroxide to make water. Okay, it doesn't mean there aren't faster reactions, we call those explosions. But the fastest we can measure so this is actually going to be four waters. Well, what does algebra tell us? If there's six waters on this side and four on this side, what do we do? Collect terms. Six minus four, two H2O. Two H2, O2. Isn't that wonderful? It's exactly the same as this. Oh, you gotta love science. Okay. With the students, after they've done this part of the lab and we've talked about this kind of thing, then it kind of becomes my turn. I get to play a little bit. Let's not use that one. Let's use this one. What I want to do is carry out the electrolysis, but I want both gases to be collected in one place. So I'm going to take a super jumbo pipette, kind of like the thin stem that I used before at that part, but this is huge. I'm going to put the, the water in here and electrolyze it directly. 
To do that, we take a little push pin like that, poke a hole on each shoulder of the, uh, of the jumbo pipette, and I wind up poking a pencil lead down each side. Put that right there. How's that? Here's one pencil lead, here's another. I've got a little piece of tape here just to keep the lead straight up and down. It's all in the world it's doing. So my electrolysis is going to take place in the electrolysis chamber that I just built. Need something to collect those gases in, so I'm going to take another pipette and cut it off like this. I'm going to fill this with water Invert it over the stem. I don't need all this plastic, so I'm going to cut this about here. Then I kind of measure it because I want to make sure that the tip of this one is up past the shoulder here. If it's not, then what's going to happen is bubbles of gas are going to come out the bottom of the stem rather than where I want. So. I need to electrolyze sodium sulfate solution. So the trick on this is to squeeze on the sides, not on the leads. Squeeze some air out. Do it again. Squeeze some air out. I want it about three-fourths full. OK, that'll work. Can use the same battery, but I don't need the pencil leads anymore. I'm going to hook up the electrodes to here. I'm going to take my cutoff pipette and some distilled water, fill that pipette. up the electrodes. Notice the water stays in the uh, pipette bulb. And carry out the electrolysis in one spot. Now both gases are being generated here. Both gases are moving up into here. The 400 milliliter beaker, catch basin. Water that comes out of here has to go somewhere. This is the point at which I say, but on a molecular level, it's really exciting. In, uh, in my classes, this clearly takes some time. This is where I go through and reinforce some of the chemistry that's going on. This is, I can show them the battery. This is the negative electrode. This is the positive. What gas is being formed here? What gas is being formed here? Why don't I see two streams of bubbles? I never thought of that question until I did this in front of a class last April. A student said, why aren't there two, two streams of bubbles? And I didn't have an answer. I mean, I, I, was, I was prepared to point out that there are two streams down here. Then somebody else in the class said, you idiot, there's only one tube. <laughs> Wasn't my fault. So we're going to wait for this to go down. I am going to leave a little bit of water in, this, um, in the stem here. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to move that pipette bulb onto this high-tech launching device. Again, no expense spared. I'm going to put the pipette bulb over here with a little bit of water as a plug. I'm 
going to use a Tesla coil, um, high, volt, high voltage coil, not unlike what was in your grandfather's old car. But this is the greatest student motivator. <laughs> and you almost never have to actually use it. Almost never. This is usually enough. But you see, I'm getting a pretty healthy spark there. So we're going to let this go. If you have done the, um, oh, I guess it's Bob Becker's experiment with hydrogen and oxygen rockets, this is essentially the same thing. The only difference is in that experiment, you start with different amounts of hydrogen relative to the amount of oxygen and look for the optimum combination. Presumably, I'm getting the optimum combination. I should be getting two parts of hydrogen for one part of oxygen. We're getting pretty close to our goal here. I'm going to let it get down to about there. There's going to be about two or three more bubbles. Okay, let's see how we do here. I love that. That is so satisfying. But it even gets better. I have taken, and I'll just set that there and let you, I'll better hold it, I guess, let you look at it. What I've done is take a bulb just like the one that's over there somewhere. This time I've put a little piece of copper wire in each side. It's a gap of uh, a millimeter or so, not really critical. Hot melt glue to seal where I put the wire in. We're going to do the same thing, but a little bit differently. So I'll get this going. In some ways, this is even more satisfying. We'll set this aside and bring this out. This time, it's going to be a little bit different. Not a lot, just enough. And I'm going to use this as a gauge. Because what I'm going to do when that's ready, I'm going to clamp it in here. Clamp it mouth down. Underwater. Is that doing? Doing all right. Notice I've got those two wires sticking out the side. What I want to do is set this so that with water in the petri dish, the tip of the pipette, and that one's about the same as this one. will be under the water level, but so that the uh, wires, or the clamp won't interfere with the wires. In this case, I can put that just a little bit higher. In this case, I'm going to let almost, if not all, of the water go out of there and just count on the fact that I can move this to here 
without any significant loss of gas. This time when I set it off, I'm going to have a little bit different situation. Because what I want to do is have it work so that the spark jumps from one of these wires to the other. So what you're going to see is I have to ground the, um, one of the two wires, and then I'll touch off the other one. If you're going to do this, by the time you get through two of these pipettes full, especially if you get the do it again, um, the carbon electrodes will have deteriorated enough. And you'll be able to see this towards the end. Maybe you can now. There's particulate matter down here. Those electrodes are slowly decomposing. When the last of the water runs out, I'll be in a hurry to get the bulb from here so that the tip is underwater. Once I get there, then whatever time it takes me to get it in place is immaterial. I'm going to go from here to here. Okay, that's under the water. Take one of my wires. I'm going to touch the Tesla coil to this side. So I'll run a ground from here. To here. I love it. At this point, I talked to the students about what did you see? Well, it exploded. That's really cool. Do it again. What else do you see? There's the water level up here. But the explosion went this way. How did that water get in there? Look at the equation. This time I'm going the other direction. I've got gases becoming a liquid. What do we know about the relative volumes of liquids and gases? Liquids take up much less space. So even though all those gases were con it kind of expelled between the fact that there's less material in here and now what is left is liquid. Good graphic demonstration. You're kind of stretching credulity, but a good graphic demonstration of the difference between the physical nature of gases and liquids. It's a fun demonstration. It's a fun experiment for the kids. It's a more fun demonstration for the teacher. That's why I do it. <laughs>